Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're going to be talking about double under slots, which has come up a couple of times on stream. Uh, and I'm going to explain what it is and how it's different from kind of normal classes and when you would maybe want to use it. And so let's jump into that. Okay, so first we're going to talk about normal classes and what, you know, what attributes they get sort of magically. Oops, I'm in the wrong folder here. Whoops. Um, so we're going to make a small class. Oh, this is the old... <laughs> I forgot to clean up from the previous video. Whoops. Okay, so we're going to make just the most basic class here, just class C pass. And we're going to interactively run that script. And we're going to instantiate a version of C. Now C will get this magical double under dict attribute, uh, which represents the instance variables of that object. So if we were to assign something to it, say c.x equals 2, and we look at double under dict, this dictionary magically represents the attributes that are there. Uh, you can, of course, also, you know, set some other thing in here. Uh, you know, a equals, oops, c dot double under dict. Uh, and then that will change the attributes of c. So classes by default are backed by dictionaries. And, you know, the attributes uh, naturally look up inside of this double under dict. Now, this can change. Uh, you can, you know, remove this double interdict, and the way you do that is with slots. So we'll make another class here which has slots, and slots takes an iterable. I usually use a tuple because it's, you know, it should be thought of as immutable. Um, but, you know, let's do x and y in here. And so this will make a different class, d, and when we instantiate d, you'll notice that d does not have a double interdict attribute. And this is because we have set slots on it. And so slots objects do not have dictionaries as their underlying, you know, structure. And if we, you know, assign X, we can assign it. If we assign Y, we can also assign it. And we can access those attributes, D.X and D.Y, and, you know, they retrieve themselves back. But if you were to try and assign some attribute outside of X and Y, it will error. So if we did D.Z equals four, you'll see that it that we get an attribute error here. It says attribute error D does not have an attribute Z. And the reason for that is slots is pre-allocating a, uh, a small chunk of memory with all of the variables at uh, construction time. So it only has space for X and Y and doesn't have space for any of those other attributes there. Uh, whereas the dictionary example before, the object storage was kind of a, a random blob of dictionary like you could you could stuff as many attributes in there as you wanted and uh, yeah so that's that's kind of the difference between dict and slots and they are disparate so one one will get one and one will get the other interestingly if you inherit from a slots object so if you do class e that inherits from d and we do pass again you'll see if we make an e object it now has a double under dict again and this is because slots and dict apply at each level of class inheritance. So anytime you inherit, you will, you know, reset slots back to normal. It does still have slots, so we can still do e.x equals, you know, 2 and e.y equals 3. Uh, and these are still going into these slot variables from d. Because uh, if we look at double under dict here, you'll see that it is not, it does not put x and y into double under dict. But if we were to do e.z equals 4, this is allowed now, and that is going to go into this double under dict here. Um, and so when you're thinking about slots, you have to think about it at each level of your class inheritance. Uh, so next, let's talk about why you would want to use slots versus dict. Uh, and I, I think in general, you don't want to use slots just because it's a little bit of extra code and it's not going to make a difference in most cases. Uh, also, if I recall correctly, it used to be slower to use slots. I'm not sure if that is, is still true. I haven't benchmarked it in quite a while. Uh, but generally, I think you can just stick to the normal way classes are built and avoid some boilerplate code. But sometimes, if you are allocating a ton of these objects, uh, slots can save you some memory. And the reason for this is slots gives you kind of a, a fixed contiguous chunk of memory where it's going to stick those variables, and it's, it's exactly the size of the number of variables that you need. Uh, whereas if you're storing in a dictionary, the dictionary may be arbitrarily sized. And usually dictionaries have a little bit of extra space such that new additions to the dictionary don't cause a reallocation. And this, this allows them to be fast. And so you know, with, a, with a contiguous chunk of memory, you're going to have just as much as memory as you actually need. And with the dictionary, you're going to have slightly more capacity. 
than you actually need. And so you can save some memory uh, by using double under slots. The other reason is if you want to very strictly constrain the attributes that you have on your object. So like say, you know, we don't want somebody to stuff another attribute into this D class. So we only want X and Y, we can't have anything else. Uh, so that would be another reason you would do this. Also, if you need to make an immutable class, this would be another way to, to uh, constrain the attributes there. But anyway, that's the general difference between dict and slots on object instances. Hopefully this was useful. If you have additional stuff you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.